Travis Wayne Goodsell. In my dreams this morning, I dreamed that uh, I was being freed, or I was freeing myself from the place that was holding me captive. I was uh, making preparations not to uh, go back and stay in my cell or place of captivity. And uh, had had a, a backpack that I needed somebody else to go back and get for me because I didn't want to go back into my place. And uh, I had uh, obtained uh, little tiny plastic swords. And uh, one of the, the guard type people... Uh, was not believing that I was leaving. <coughs> and uh, interestingly, uh, that's the way things are, is I could leave my captivity, I'd end up on the streets, uh, and nobody would care, nobody would come looking for me to rescue me. Uh, after 30 days, uh, my place would be considered abandoned and uh, they would be happily, well, yeah, happily throwing away everything of mine and that was left behind and, and rented out to someone else into captivity. And, uh, uh, yeah, my my voice uh, to uh, the world is is relatively small. It's biggest on on my website. YouTube shadow bans me. Uh, Amazon people are only interested in Paleo Hebrew, uh, and so in comparison, uh, my website is uh, a relatively small voice among all the other loud booming voices and uh, that's that's the problem I see if I were to sum up a problem that would be it is that uh, everybody follows their own voice and the consequences of that is the destruction of society Nobody listens to a true voice that will lead to a good outcome. Uh, people just follow the trending fads of voices on social media or in the movies or on the, uh, we don't have radio anymore. So music, probably not so much music anymore. I, I don't know. I don't really get to hear uh, music like I used to, like on the radio, 
Uh, YouTube is my only place for uh, learning of anything new that comes out. But, uh, yeah. So just like uh, I, all great artists who become great once they're dead, uh, I would hope that that was me, but it would be too late. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'll be uh, finishing up my uh, last of uh, the review of General Conference of the LDS Church, and then I can get going on to other stuff that I have outlined in uh, in my website which uh, will include languages and that has always been my passion that's what I found that I wanted to pursue for the rest of my life was uh, 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 reading the ancient texts there's not much involved with Paleo-Hebrew, but there's tons in Egyptian, and uh, it's the source origin for scripture, and so that's what I want to do with my life, is immerse myself in scripture. Uh, unfortunately, I'll have to do it alone, and, uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, that's unfortunately the the main thing that the LDS Church uh, is vulnerable to somebody else figuring out how to do translation other than them. Uh, they think they have a monopoly on it, but yet despite that thinking, they've done nothing with it. All these uh, generations, all these decades, all their presidential leaders <coughs> since Joseph Smith, and they've done nothing. And in fact, now they even say that Joseph Smith wasn't even a translator. He was, he was my muse. Growing up in the LDS Church, I looked to Joseph. I admired and and was an odd by him to uh, raise up a, uh, a church on the Americas and uh, uh, reading over the Book of Mormon, reading over his actual words, I guess, even though they were written down by others, that King Follett discourse. Uh, I, I developed my sarcastic nature from him. I, uh, I desired to translate, you know, not just with the Book of Mormon claims of being a translation of a, an ancient buried document, but you've got the, the uh, Book of Abraham. I wanted to know how to read it. And uh, my mom discouraged me and said, oh, it's only for people with higher learning. You have to go to the temple first, she said. <laughs> and, uh, and so that, of course, made me want to know more about it. And then he, he also had the King Follett discourse where he said the Hebrew text of the Bible was wrong. And so what do I do when I first get my opportunity to learn biblical Hebrew? I try to figure out how Joseph translated his, the Hebrew text, and sure enough, I figured it out. And uh, everybody is wrong. <laughs> he he was on the right path. He wasn't complete. He never completed anything. Uh, being in jail all the time made it difficult to do that. But uh, uh, he had the right idea. Of how to translate and uh, uh, he had to be taught Hebrew uh, but uh, Egyptian you know 
yeah, he knew. He figured it out. Uh, it took me a different path to figure out that he was right. Uh, Paleo-Hebrew uh, decipherment led to Egyptian pitcher glyph decipherment, which led to the identification of the biblical stories, both Gospel and Torah, uh, contained in the translations decipherment that I was making uh, with the Egyptian uh, pitcher glyphs. And, uh, and then as I look back on the methodology that I used, which was scientific based, not feeling based, not opinion based, not uh, belief based, other than I wanted to find out how he was right, but I still utilized scientific methodology to do it. And uh, sure enough, he was right. He made some errors <laughs> with what little he did come up with, but uh, his methodology was correct. And for that, Mormons hate me. That's the weird thing, is that I'd always thought that I was behind in knowledge when I first moved into Utah. I thought Mormons knew it all, and uh, I soon found out that because of my efforts in trying to uh, catch up as I so believed, I actually got ahead of Mormons here in Utah. And uh, uh, that scares Mormons. Uh, having somebody who actually does their research in a, a field that they are in and dominate and this goes for any business it's a pattern for any business is that when somebody who actually does, does his research does his studies uh, and excels because of that uh, it's a threat to those who are there just to be there to have a, a lifestyle uh, that's comfortable to them and so then somebody comes along and says hey you know hey this is the way things are and, and people get scared and when people get scared they get angry and they want to destroy what they now perceive as a threat and uh, that's the one thing that I never counted on is that following the leaders of the prophets and studying the scriptures would ultimately lead to the religion uh, wanting me destroyed literally destroyed uh, the church had me locked up for six years of my life and uh, uh, and then in the end uh, a bishop thought of me as a threat because I was claiming the Book of Mormon was the source origin for the doctrines of the Mormon church. Go figure, huh? And that Joseph Smith was correct on his translations. I still remember as I was uh, identifying correct translations of Joseph Smith, or at least the mannerism, uh, the, uh, the bishop would get up uh, during fast and testimony meetings and declare that he knew the Book of Mormon was a, a, a true translation. <laughs> Just blatantly uh, bearing false witness. He didn't bother to do any of the research. He didn't study the ancient languages. You know, the Book of Mormon is contains correct information yes not about history <laughs> and yes it is plagiarized uh, but it's encoded there's a, a coded message in there and unless you know the code it you're clueless when you read it 
it's just a bunch of stories to people and some people catch on that oh hey you know this story is sort of like this situation that I'm in you know I have an older brother and my older brother uh, beats me up you know going with Laman and Nephi that story uh, so some people catch on to the connections in their life uh, but they don't make the connection in the grand scheme of things what the big message is that they have encoded inside <clears throat> and so it's uh, frustrating that I can't even get to that level with Mormons that I have to point out to Mormons hey the Book of Mormon's not a translation of an ancient document. I know Egyptian. It's not derived from Egyptian. And everybody is still stuck on chiasmus, Paleo-Hebrew, or Hebrew, rather, uh, Hebrew poetry. And, and they, don't, they don't see, they don't make the connection. But the Book of Mormon itself says it's Egyptian. It is not Hebrew. There should not be Hebrew chiasmus in the Book of Mormon. <laughs> but they don't see it and they hate me when I point it out to them and uh, and so uh, despite YouTube being the uh, place where the majority of my views which are small like a little tiny sword plastic sword from my dream uh, I have a very small voice in the church uh, and they don't realize how much I've impacted their lives with the confusing voice within the church because my voice was the traditional voice of Joseph Smith uh, with the influences that I've made and impacted them on and the church has been fighting that and trying to change that voice into a different path and direction and so uh, Mormons don't want to listen to my voice and are angry and upset and uh, there's a couple of Mormons who will immediately put a thumbs down on my YouTube video version of this because it's long too long now for me to just upload it straight to my website and so I'll have to utilize YouTube to uh, transfer a, a copy that people can watch uh, before downloading or choosing to download if they choose. <coughs> uh, but uh, yeah, uh, I guess I'm able to go back to my roots of what I like to do. Uh, even though there's still the warning voice that needs to go out uh, that's why I, I stopped is because when I was doing my work on Egyptian and Paleo-Hebrew I, I saw the warnings and uh, and then uh, Fox News 13, Fox 13 News Utah uh, announced on the 4th of November uh, 2016 that a total solar eclipse was coming on America over America and I knew right there that that was scriptural fulfillment and so I then altered course to research all of that I had known previously what that meant but that's as far as I wanted to go I was interested in language turns out that I needed to do astronomy as well uh, which I had had a couple of classes on uh, even the calculus one Ugh. <laughs> but uh, uh, that's where the ancients got their uh, their muse from to write scripture in the first place that uh, was from the from the stars and uh, and so in that course I I found all the signs from the Bible uh, in the heavens and they've all happened and now we wait for destruction because that's what it all means guys 
what do you think Jesus was talking about in the in the Gospels in Matthew 24? You know, there will have to come destruction before the millennium of peace, and so Christians are trying to make the destruction happen, and, and they don't realize that they're the bad guys when they do that. You can't make bad happen to justify the good that would result. You end up losing out on the good. It's that simple. <clears throat> so if you believe you're going to be raptured, you're going to be disappointed. Uh, if you believe that you're going to live into the millennium, you're going to be disappointed. Because remember, the wicked will be destroyed. And if you cause the wickedness, that makes you the wicked, and therefore you will be the one destroyed. And it's because of what you caused. You will be the source of your own destruction. And so Mormons, you know, Mormons are the same way. Mormons choose to do nothing. They sit back and wait for their leaders to compel them what to do. And that's the main problem with religion is that you have authoritarians leading the congregations in Christianity and in the church it's one supreme authoritarian overall similar to a pope and uh, when you have authoritarian situations you tend to cling to authoritarian governments to lead you and you can become dependent upon government uh, for your livelihood and, uh, and that authoritarian government just doesn't work. It collapses. And throughout history, we've seen that. Government after government after government collapses because they pursue authoritarianism. And authoritarianism cannot take care of the people. It's more concerned about itself. <laughs> Protecting itself against the people. And uh, that's why they collapse. They cause their own collapse because of the manner in which they're set up. And uh, our nation has never followed the Constitution. But we all give lip service and say, oh, the Constitution is the greatest. And we need to keep the Constitution the Republican way or the Democrat way. No, you can't interpret the Constitution. It is what it is. Our rights are life, liberty, and property for we the people. It's in the preamble. We the people. In order to form a more perfect nation. <clears throat> and uh, we've never followed it. We talk the talk about wanting a more perfect nation. And... We haven't even bothered to see if the experimental constitution would work. We've had party groups since Thomas Jefferson who have picked and chosen the way they want to interpret it and run the government accordingly. And little by little, all during our American history, uh, our rights to life, liberty, and property have been chipped away. And uh, now we're in a situation where people are being tortured, murdered, enslaved, and uh, nobody cares. There's just apathy all around. People complaining about their own issues rather than looking at the big picture. <coughs> so... Uh, it's 2.30 in the morning. I, of course, have to go running at 4-ish. It's Saturday, so uh, sometimes the, the criminals like to stay out a little bit later on, on Saturday morning because they know that people will sleep in more. Not as many people go out to work at, uh, around the getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning <clears throat> so that they can leave for work at 5 because we're way out here in the suburbs. It takes a, an hour to, almost to an hour to get to downtown. 
so but uh, all right so yeah I'll finish that today and since it's Saturday I don't have news unless bar submits the the uh, butchered edited Mueller report then the news is promised to cover that this weekend as breaking news otherwise I'll pursue uh, the other categories and if you're paying attention I already started the other categories or did the Constitutional Republic page uh, but uh, yeah, I'll be able to do the others now that I'm all caught up on conference so I notice not as many people are are going now, uh, but uh, we'll see how starting the Constitutional Republic page will do to see if it's just a fluke that I had over a thousand views that one day, or and then a lot the next. But uh, we'll see. So. Yeah, my only intention is to save you guys. But you guys don't realize you need to be saved. And that's the sad part. You know, I don't want to be saved, sending out the warning voice. You know, I want to be working on Hebrew and Egyptian scripture. <laughs> but I cannot just sit back and do my own thing. You know, when I see uh, that there's a danger, uh, I cannot just sit back and let it happen without warning people. So that's the message that nobody cares to listen to, that nobody will hear, that everybody fights and argues with. And yet look at us. Look at where we are now. I'd been right this whole time because I knew the code. I knew the, the warning. I saw the signs and I knew how to interpret them. So, all right. April 13th, 2019.